understanding what relativity tells us is really important because uh, when you look at what uh, relativity says, it's that uh, it, it's relative, you, you know? So when we say that it takes millions of years to the light of a distant star to reach us, uh, to that, that's from our relative perspective. That, that's, fr that's defined by our inertial frame of reference. Mm -hmm. How are we moving through space? If you were to look at it from the uh, frame of reference of the light ray, the, the photon, if you will, being emitted by the star, it takes zero time and it traverses zero distance. It, it gets from the star to your retina instantaneously. From the photon's perspective, your retina and the surface of the star are in contact with each other. Because in general relativity, as uh, acceleration increases and approaches the speed of light, you get a contraction of space. At the speed of light, you have an infinite contraction of space. Uh, and you also have uh, time dilation, which at the speed of light it equals uh, timelessness. Right. So we have ageless photons interconnecting us, you know, uh, in the way I look at it, sort of like a standing wave kind of format where, you know, at the, in the experience of the photon itself, the, the light is there, there's a different, perhaps an entirely different dimension of time or experience or whatever that occurs at that speed, but it's instantaneous. You know, it's, it's, it's the energy is vibrating the leaving of the star and it's arriving on you at the same time. Um, but to, you know, address a couple of the deeper aspects of the question, you know, well, you could say time doesn't exist, right? Like it's, it's easy to make that statement, but when you get into the experiential physics of perception and things like that, it doesn't really work to just say it flat out like time doesn't exist because we experience time, right? We do experience the movement of time. We experience aging. We experience something leaving one point and arriving in another. As long as we're experiencing space, we are experiencing time to some extent. Now, if our if we were if we enter a state of consciousness that is going at the speed of light, in that moment, is there time that we experience or space that we experience? The answer to that may be that the answer is no. That at that point we are experiencing at some level the singularity of the whole universe. And this may be a description for the kind of metaphysical experiences that individuals have when they enter a state when they experience themselves as the entire universe simultaneously, like a God realization experience as, you know, some spiritual traditions would call it. Um, but we do definitely experience time because we experience space in this, this field. And when you ask is the speed of light is a constant or can it vary? Well, that has everything to do with space that the light is traveling through. Um, because space time and and light are actually the same thing I mean at the most fundamental level you're the the the, the quantum uh, field the Planck scale lattice is made out of light and as that field uh, contracts and expands and etc like that affects and curves that affects the movement of light and we have been able to mainly just see that the speed of light changes based on the density of energy information in space time. So if you have a much more uh, stronger density of energy information in space time, uh, and that can be like literally material density, like speed of light in water or air or through matter is different than it is in a vacuum uh, relative to a perceiver, right? Um, so, so we understand that, that the speed of light speed is in some way deeply, uh, enmeshed with the density of energy information in the space time that that light is traveling through. Would you agree with me there, Wayne? Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, I think that, uh, that's a really 
important point, a, a couple of important points you bring up, uh, like regarding, for instance, the uh, standing way uh, mm -hmm. nature of, of light, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's so really uh, what fascinates me about it is that uh, when investigating the, the, this kind of uh, a deeper principle uh, of, of physics, you begin to see how the universe creates time from timelessness. Uh, mm -hmm. So that it is, as you said, that it's a both end. You, you have the experience of time, although, you know, ultimately there may be, it's, it's timeless, eternal, but mm -hmm. that, that's uh, almost the, the uh, brilliance of the universe uh, is that it, it produces time from timelessness, it produces mass from massless space. Uh, you know, it, it produces structure from uh, undefined space. You know, so it, it, it is able to uh, have this, this kind of both and quality. Yeah. yeah. And and that that's a, a an interesting thing about um, what then is the speed of light. Uh, you, you know, one way to look at it is that it is kind of like the refresh rate, the maximum mm. uh, refresh rate mm. of the universe. So that refresh rate, that kind of means like, uh, you know, like say, say your computer, uh, it is uh, constantly kind of um, uh, refreshing its systems, like checking uh, to see uh, uh, if everything is running appropriately, uh, you know, so. Yeah. Um, and the screen in particular has a refresh rate based on yeah. the cycles of the, um, which, which pixels should be turned down? Oh, these ones. Which pixels should be turned on? Oh, these ones, you know, and that's the speed of the refresh rate of the, win of the monitor. And, and it's constantly checking that. Uh, yep. and, and so the universe is doing the same thing uh so that that maximum refresh rate for the universe uh makes it appear that there's like a maximum speed limit uh, of which uh, is the, the the maximum rate at which anything can occur and the maximum rate is uh the speed of light and that's based in part on the uh Planck scale structure of space time uh because uh, if it's comprised of these PSUs, uh, the, the, these um, Planck spherical units, uh, then uh, what is the minimum amount of time it takes for one Planck unit to influence the one next to it? Mm -hmm. uh, and you, you know, if you calculate that, uh, it's um, the Planck time, which is the time it takes to uh, light to move to from. To, to travel. So, um, yeah. you, you know, it's like this refresh rate so that, that uh, you have timelessness, uh, but uh, because the universe is, is constantly uh, uh, forming and- Fluctuating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fluctuating in feedback loops, maybe? Uh, is it? Uh, yeah. Exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's an information feedback fluctuation going on at all times, which is, is pretty wild. <laughs> and, and yeah, I mean, the nature, you know, the nature of time, I guess it's the last part of this question. And Jermaine is, is here with us. I don't see you on video, but we'll bring you in if you'd like to just say hi. Um, you know, well, the nature of time itself is something that is, uh, is, has been an, a philosophical question for people for you know millions of years, or thousands of years anyway, and and when you when you really get down to uh, relativity, as William was saying, like and you you kind of get to the basics of it, time and space are deeply interconnected, and our experience of space time regulates our experience of the speed of light and our relative movement through the fabric of space-time changes our perception of how light moves. Um, however, there is one last thing I want to say about that, which is that just because you can't move through space or accelerate through space uh, in a way that creates more and more and more tension to the point where you reach the speed of light. In other words, 
it's extremely difficult to accelerate to the speed of light. It doesn't mean it's not possible to go from one location to another faster than light. Um, and this is a really big distinction that, that comes into play for me when you're looking at unified physics because you realize that the only limitation uh, in traveling faster than light uh, that is generally understood in physics is the idea that you can't accelerate to light speed or faster than light speed because you're literally pushing your way through the fabric. And as you're accelerating, you're warping the fabric. That's creating G-force or gravitational force, um, which is literally gravity that you're creating by warping space-time around you as you accelerate. Um, but the shortcut is, and, and I think I addressed this in module six, but I'm not sure if I, I went into it or not. Um, the shortcut is if you could create an envelope around yourself or your craft or whatever, that separates the internal space time from the external space time, kind of like shearing the fabric of space the way that a proton does, then you'd be able to move your mass through space time without the uh, effects of warping the surrounding space time and having the acceleration limits. So this might be how things like starships are able to hit 90 degree turns and shoot off, you know, and warp drive. Um, faster than light is because they've got a way to actually separate the effects of gravitation and the effects of the space-time fabric that's outside the craft from what's going on inside the craft.